welcome uh, all medical education friends here in Krakow and uh, online. And this is after a few years of uh, virtual meetings. This is so fantastic to meet all the friends here uh, in in a so-called meet space. This is a newly approved by the Merriam-Webster uh, phrase. And I was so excited to, to meet for the first time uh, people in Lyon at the Amy conference. And I was giving so many hugs that, of course, I, I got COVID. So now I'm a little bit, I, I contain my emotions to the master, even if I'm very happy to see people that, that I see here. So um, this is the UN city in, uh, in Copenhagen, a fantastic building. And I will be talking about uh, the, I think really interesting initiative being Pine European Leadership Academy. So um, at this slide, you can, you can see the lead of this, uh, the name of the lead of Ella. Ella, in, for people who don't speak Polish, Ella, yeah, which is obviously just the, the first letters of the name, but Ella in Polish is like Betty in English for Elizabeth, so this sounds very nice for Polish people. So Gabriel Jacob is the lead, and there are the names of, of, of my colleagues who are working on this uh, together with me. Uh, yesterday, Michael was sort of disappointed that he couldn't, that he couldn't uh, list any financial conflicts of interest for your presentation. So, so I, I, I need to list that uh, my affiliation for this meeting is Medical University of Łódź in Poland. However, I'm employed by WHO. I'm the consultant for the, the Office of the Regional Director, uh, consultant in, uh, in education. So um, following this, and just to make it clear, I, I, I think almost everyone knows it, but uh, the European WHO region, it's not Europe, it's much larger. This is this, um, I don't know how to, how to call this, color lilac, I think. So this is the, the really huge um, area that we still call the um, WHO uh, European region. Um, leadership competence, teaching, learning, and assessing. And yesterday, um, Antonina asked the way when we we're talking about in the, for, during the Polish sessions, when we we're talking about implementing change for Polish curricula, and Antonina asked how to how to involve people. And and today, this is especially this this is especially for you. This slide showing that we always have those people that are so happy to be with us, and we have. Uh, to, to lead the change. We have people who are against us, but we have also this middle uh, huge group of people that are just resistant to change. And uh, we have, we can, we can hear this, the, the phrases um, that you can see at the screen. And I, I said yesterday that for our master classes for teachers from my university, we display this slide and we say, you are not allowed to say any of these phrases. Like we have always done this this way. So, uh, and we need, we need to find the proper way. Uh, I, I think it's, it's a really nice graph from Bransford and Schwartz. So, so there, there are these people who don't want to change. They just want to wear cozy slippers. And they say it's, it's efficient, it's safe. Uh, there are these people that want to implement innovation for the purpose of innovation, just because like our, our units for international cooperation, for getting money, very often they say we need to implement something new and we need leaders to lead us through this um, optimal adapt adaptability corridor. And this is the third presentation in a row showing CANMETS, but I will show a little bit different slide at first because this is the first framework. And you can see this first framework from 1996 that one of the petals is called manager. And if you see the description of, uh, of the roles of manager, they are very, very particular sort of business oriented. And now uh, 2015, and these are the graphs that you can see uh, before, and suddenly we have the leader. It's a huge shift because leader, it is not a transformation. It is like a paradigmatic shift because uh, we very clearly see that leaders and managers both are needed, but these are different sets of competences and a totally different uh, definition, um, talking about contributing to a vision of high quality healthcare systems. So this is something so different from just manage, micromanaging. And my PhD student who's working in this area on his new project, uh, this is just the poster from one of the conferences because he started now the um, scoping review. So apart from finding uh, all the definitions of leadership in healthcare, uh, he could identify 
uh, that there is huge disparity in the number of papers uh, published, uh, papers on leadership competence for the health workforce. As you can see, quite a lot of, uh, um, of publications for, uh, from and for nurses, and this is not surprising for me, uh, then physicians, but then the other uh, groups are still not very active in this. However, I will show you a very nice example from pharmacy very soon. And finally, uh, to show that this importance of vision is not quite new, uh, the phrase where the, there is no vision, the people perish comes from the book of proverb, from Proverbs. So leadership is not a new discovery. So now back to uh, Copenhagen and back to the concept of ELA. And this is the moment, so this all uh, begins uh, with the European program of work. And this is the moment, it is a little bit off topic, but I always, uh, whenever I talk um, about uh, European pro program of work, I ask and I don't want to, it's like uh, only the question without answers. How many of people here who are developing curricula and changing curricula know for the European schools? And if you are not from Europe, uh, you have equivalent programs. How many of you know the European program of work of WHO, who is the main stakeholder of the health, health workforce? So how many people adapt the medical curricula of us here to respond to the flagship initiatives, which are mental health, digital health, um, immunization, and cultural insights in health? I think we really need to be proactive because I have a feeling that uh, postgraduate education is trying to fix uh, not perfect because very traditional product of uh, of undergraduate education, while we should implement this responsive education from the very beginning of healthcare education. So if we want to really improve the healthcare for the European region, we need leaders. So we decided that people in Europe need to get that kind of tra uh, training, people who are the health workforce for the Europe. And these are the, the structured formal objectives of, uh, of our project. And we build uh, ELA around three tiers. And I need to, so the tier one are people at the very beginning of their careers. So people who just graduated from medicine, from public health, nursing, midwifery. Tier two are mid-career professionals. Tier three are high level decision makers. And just to clarify, because it, um, I have realized when talking about this previously, that sometimes people think that it's a sort of like a structure in the, at the university. So you graduate from tier two, one, two, three, no, these are, I mean, it's not impossible. However, and I wish that our tier one learners will become high level uh, leaders in the future, but these are like three separate programs. Uh, and tier one is already up and running and not only up and running, but I need to run from here at exactly at 5 p.m. get back home in which I repack my bag and fly to Copenhagen because we have the very special, what we would call here a graduation ceremony for the first demonstration project. So how we build the competency framework. And uh, this is a picture of my friend and colleague, uh, Pascal Groch, who, who is a absolute expert in, in, in frameworks of WHO. So we started looking at the WHO framework of competency. But what we could see uh, was that apart from being a really good, very, very well thought out frameworks developed by the super team of experts, but this is internally oriented. So this is how to lead your organization. So it would be a little bit how to lead your school, how to lead your, uh, your pharmacy and so on. What we really want to achieve, we want to achieve leaders who will improve the healthcare of the countries. And in fact, this is what we should always be thinking here. We are training people, the aim of training doctors, nurses, is finally for the patient. So we started looking for the good practice examples. And for example, uh, I said that there are not so many um, examples from, three times example, now fourth, so there's not so many publications from uh, pharmacy. However, if you look at this, if you see this slide, already in 2017, they included leadership uh, as a core competency for uh, pharmacists. And now in the very recent project, I, I, I could a little bit contribute to this project. Uh, this is a, a huge area, leadership for pharmacists. And then there are many national frameworks, for example, very interesting, and a um, Scottish NHS uh, 
framework so we could find all the elements that we could uh, that we identified as important for uh, for our program and then um, by professor, professor Mielska knows that I, 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 I work um, also in the field of professionalism so uh, we were just thinking how to um, find how to make this list of competency um, somehow divided into categories and there is a very very famous uh, paper from Kalinka van der Kamp um, how to conceptualize professionalism and um, together with her colleagues she suggested three categories interpersonal public and intra I don't know why this order it should be intrapersonal interpersonal and public and we were thinking how to map our competencies on this excellent idea and this is something I'm really proud with because I well because we uh, we have developed this uh, concept to um, I think to totally de novo so to um, show what does it mean the leader so in the middle similarly to the to, to Kalinka's Vanderkamp you have leading personal and uh, professional development at first I need to become the leader for myself mm -hmm. then I need to learn how to lead my team and then I need to learn how to lead uh, organizations and how to improve the change uh, the health of the societies so these are the three categories and it doesn't mean that uh, you need only the first category when you are young and then you need to add uh, the next categories you, you just need to learn it all so uh, I will not, uh, it, it's not a secret, but I will not bother you with all the details competencies, the list of competencies. When we had it, we had to map it on the, uh, I mean, we, we need to develop, we, we had to develop the constructive alarm, uh, alignment with teaching, learning and assessment. And for this, I mentioned it yesterday, I think it, it may be interesting uh, because we could see this at, um, at the first pr presentation, this typical, a circle, which is also here, curriculum development, outcomes, uh, teaching, learning, and assessment. While in WHO, we have decided, but now I'm jumping from Copenhagen to Geneva, where I'm working with WHO Academy, that if we have the, okay, if we have the list of competence, competencies, at first we make the jump to assessment. Can we assess it? Because if we cannot assess it, there is something wrong with this. And then we are back to planning learning activities. So, and this is now a very, very traditional slide, but I really like it. 10 hardened questions. Everyone perhaps knows it. Then they may be very traditional, but this is really good at least to sit and discuss. So who is our uh, graduate? So what do we want to, what are the aims? What are the objectives? So we use this for initial brainstorming. And we came up with uh, five learning blocks experiential placements, transformational leadership, transversal skills, tailored learning, and special initiatives. And they have intersection, intersections with educational portfolio, which we chose as assessment, weekly team building meetings, and educational consultations and support. So again, so many presentations included Miller model. We were mapping our blocks on the Miller model to be sure that we are covering everything. But then Agatha yesterday mentioned this higher level. And uh, yes, so we are aiming at is or becomes. And this is, I, 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 I love it. And if anyone knows who was the first person, because I would very much like to, to properly reference the person who added this is, is uh, so please let me know. Uh, so this is uh, what we believe that our, this pink part of, of our um, graph uh, leading own professional personal development, this is exactly what supports us in this, um, in aiming towards becomes or is. So we have uh, the core of this academy is experiential learning. So our learners have had two long time experiential placement. This is, I think this is the nicest cir circus I know. This is just in UN city. And at first in UN city uh, in uh, WHO central offices then in the country offices they are they are now coming from country offices to to Copenhagen and then we had transformational leadership uh, webinars and seminars online it was coordinated uh, by me and presented by me and my my colleagues from different countries 
and then a huge, huge module on transversal skills based on the I learn, uh, it's a huge repository of resources of WHO, uh, tailored learning, including learning courses, and then participation in particular initiatives, like for example, WHO Immunization Week, when our learners could contribute to, to them and lead their own, at the beginning, not very huge, but their own uh, projects. So as I said, uh, we have decided that our assessment will be based on the reflective portfolio, and the portfolio has exactly the same elements as our learning blocks. Um, portfolio also serves as supports our evaluation. I don't have, I only include a very, very basic slide uh, about uh, evaluation. However, we, uh, we are currently still, develop, we have implemented, but we are all the time developing the evaluation framework and we have a really interesting, uh, interesting um, feedback in, uh, information, uh, including uh, the, how much not only learners contributed from experiential placements, but how much all the placements, units, offices benefited for having people who come from distant countries and bring their culture and bring their, uh, their local experience. It, it, I, I might talk for a very long time about the impact of COVID, which uh, of course made everything super complex, especially that all our le learners currently are from the outside of the European Union. So vaccination, visas, and so on. But there were also some beneficial aspects uh, because what we finally, um, the choice of uh, um, central offices was uh, as the first placement was uh, just because of COVID, it came out very, very, uh, very beneficial for our learners. So I would like to show you a few quotations from, uh, this is also interesting when you work with, uh, well, I think all, all of us work with international students in Poland. If you, some people may not know, but practically every university have English international programs. So we know how, how diverse are people. And um, this is also interesting because coming from different countries and different educational backgrounds, we don't have the same uh, self-reflection competency. So competence. So it was interesting also to observe like it was one of our key strategies to develop the self-reflection. So how our learners were developing self-reflection and how uh, it, it is uh, in, in their portfolio, how they could reflect on everything they were learning. So I'm not reading this, but I will, I will read this last very recent, in fact, uh, very recent, uh, I got it last week in, in the online portfolio. For me, allies in every sense associated with the people we met throughout this experience, Every person we met has a unique life and career story and should be appreciated for how it is. This is really, this is really nice. And this so much reflects our current uh, opinion about the role of narration, about learning from everyone. And this is also, this is not really, because I, I, you, you are the first people to see this mind map, which summarizes, for, it is a summary of uh, small mind maps, uh, not small, individual mind maps submitted by individual learners. And then there were two learners who are leading the project. Let, we, we did a visual coding, visual qualitative coding, and this is everything they have learned. So this is, as you can see, this is definitely from the pandemic uh, because we are all in mask with in, in, in the first person in the middle standing is the regional director who is the heart behind this and brain behind all this initiative. So this is all I wanted to say, and I think I, I, I'm even behind the time. So this is quite special. Thank you. Thank you very much, Janusz. And the question is as follows. How much of this, I mean, leadership training, preparation people for leadership roles, be it leading themselves or international projects, should find its way to regular curricula of graduate education? Well, first of all, as you could see, this is in, in the recent comments. So, so this is like sort of uh, approved and this is approved by pharmacy. Uh, but this is also should be in the curricula of teachers of train the trainers modules. So for, 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 medical, for the Medical University of Łódź, we have one of the modules is called Masterclass. And this is about 
leading change in education. And this is not a day, honestly, I didn't brought it from, uh, I didn't brought it from WHO. This is what we were implementing. And this is how my journey with in this field, WHO started. Okay. Thank you very much, Janusz.